Welcome to EvoFound, the first installation of Leeds live web streaming on the EvoFinder Ballistic Identification System. My name is Neil Schrode, the EvoFinder Product Manager with Leeds Forensics, and today we're going to talk to you about an overview of the EvoFinder system, including its general functions and possible configurations of the system. One of the first things that we want to talk to people about with the system is to give them a generalized understanding of what the system is and what it does for your laboratories. <clears throat> The EvoFinder Ballistic Identification System is an integrated system, self-contained, that can scan bullet or cartridge case samples to generate three-dimensional representations in the software and store them in the database. The system stores it in its own self-contained database, can use these images to generate individual images for visualization or virtual comparison microscopy, and also be used for auto-identification functions within the software. The saved images can also be shared between different EvoFinder systems or exported as an X3P type file format that is compatible with other X3P systems. And then we'll talk about the configurability of the system at the end of this conversation. If at any time you have questions during this, please type them in. We'll check at the end and we'll be able to answer the questions that you may have. Now getting into the first point about this, I'm going to go over to the EvoFinder software while we talk about this. And we'll go over the sections of the EvoFinder software, starting off with the ballistic identification scanning system itself. The scanner system allows us to mount bullets or cartridge case samples in the scanning system so that we can generate a three-dimensional model in a visual representation of the face of a cartridge case, the size of a cartridge case, or the bearing surface of a bullet. Now, these samples don't have to be pristine, and we can still put them in the scanner and generate samples of deformed fragments, deformed bullets, or fragments also. It's one of the nice things about the scanner is that we're using the single system, we can put any type of these samples in there and generate an image. Now, once we put a sample in there, we get a live view of what we're looking at in the chamber, but the automated software will allow us to set up the system, generate an automatic pre uh, preview of it, and then set up the actual scan of the image while we're using it. And then while the scanner works, we can actually go and do other things in the software in the background at the same time. Now, once the system has generated the image, we're going to get these images shown in the software interface, either as a cartridge case view, which we're looking at right now with two samples, or as a, bu as a bullet view, which we'll show in just a few minutes. The nice thing about this interface is that it gives us a full 3D representation of the samples that we're imaging, we have two of them right now that we're showing as a virtual comparison microscope. So we can individually control these in the XYZ, rotate the samples, align them to each other, and also control our lighting for them so we can change the contrast of the sample itself for the examination. The lighting controls allow us full control around the sample where we can lock it as we change rotation. And we can use this to go either rotationally around the optical axis or we can use it to go on axis or more oblique, again, changing the contrast, allowing us to visualize the sample in different ways for the comparison or imaging. We can also tip the samples back in the z-axis so we can gain an oblique view of the sample itself. Right now we're looking at these samples in a three-dimensional model. We do have two other modes. The 3D allows us that light control. We can also view this as a flat image, which is a 2D grayscale image. And then we can lay that 2D over the 3D model and give us what they call a 2D plus D model, which is a third contrasting or viewing mode to allow us different ways to look at the sample we're imaging. These samples, when we scan and view them, do also contain, if we include in the scan, the side surface of the cartridge case. So now if we want to, we can look at that side surface also and be able to visualize this for chamber marks, tornado marks, uh, magazine lip marks, the same as we would the cartridge face or the bearing surface of a bullet. Moving on from here, we also have the ability to do auto identification of samples within the database. So if we have a sample under test or examination, we can use this sample and then run it against other samples within the database. With this function, using cartridge cases, we can search by our breech face impression, our firing pin impression, or our ejector marks for the auto identification function. In the case of bullets, we can use land engraved areas, grooves, or slippage marks for the auto-identification process itself. 
when we run one of these searches, the software can run in the background to determine a ranking of all the samples in the defined list and give us an ordered ranking of similarity of all the samples in that test. Now in this case, we're looking at a previously run search of 40 caliber Smith & Wesson cartridge cases where we had over 1,500 samples in the list. In this case, we've ranked them by similarity and we have one outlier statistically that has some difference from all the others in that sample set. If we want to, we can see this distribution of similarities in a histogram, where on the left side we have a peak, which is what is assumed to be a distribution of non-matched samples to the sample under test. And then if there's an outlier, we can see a statistical confidence or rarity that this is not part of that distribution, giving us an indication that it is a possible match to the sample under examination. Once we have this set up, the software will allow us to either preview the marks on these samples or load them and align them in a way that it calculates to have the greatest similarity between the two samples. In this case, we can see the ranking of similarity based on our breach impression or from our striker mark, so we have two different rankings within the list to be able to look for this evaluation of possible match. When we do load the samples up, these two I've already moved, but the software will automatically align them in what it calculated as to be the highest orientation of match between the two samples. So when it gets set up, it's going to load those two and then put them next to each other. So now you can do the, you can conduct your examination to confirm if this is a match or not between the two samples. In doing our investigation, we can sweep the dividing line between the two images that we have. We can look at the images side by side. We can also do an overlapped region between the two samples to be able to do sort of a same overlap as you would see on a comparison microscope and position them to be able to get the view that we need for the samples. Going over to the bullet side of this, looking at bullets, we have a very similar perspective of this where we can have one or two samples set up side by side. Also bringing them in from our search results, we can view them in tandem from the, the sample under examination and the similar sample that came up on the results. And what I'm bringing up right now is one of the bullet samples from a Brundage set that had been run previously. So here we can see that we have the land engraved areas that have been marked for their traces for use in the auto identification, the grooves and slippage marks, if they have been labeled also in the sample. We can zoom in and out to give us a better control of what we're looking at for more detail or an over, overview of the sample. And then we can bring up a second sample and place that in comparison to the first and align the two samples so we can do the virtual comparison microscopy with the, the images. One of the nice things about the EvoFinder system is that these samples are stored in a self-contained database. So you can search at any time against the samples that you have within your system. Equally, Samples can be exported and shared with other laboratories, or EvoFinder systems can be connected together with permission from the other laboratory so that you can search other people's databases and find similar comparisons within that list. The EvoFinder is also a highly configurable system, so you can have as simple as a single scanning system, or you can network your laboratory or region so you can have it all connected together to provide access to this information to everybody else within the system. I guess the last thing that I wanted to go over in this is just a little more of the visualization controls for the bullets, where if we wanted to use the system aside from the auto identification function to align two samples, we can find similar samples to each other and then use the algorithms of the software to align them with respect to each other and see if it calculates a similarity that we didn't predict. Then we can come in and look at the comparison between these two samples and see if we want to make a determinant based determination based on the information that is available. I wanted to thank you for the chance to present to you an introduction to the EvoFinder system. Please join us in two weeks on December 17th for our next EvoFounds episode we're going to, where we're going to be going over the auto identification functions of the EvoFinder, the histograms that explain and explaining the distribution and similarities, and then the rarity statistics that apply to that histogram and what it shows for you. Thank you again for your time and I hope you have a good day.